Death Forest 3 is what you'd get if you'd pitch someone your incredibly silly movie idea that probably shouldn't exist, and still decide to make it anyway, because putting absolute nonsense in the subtitle field is incredibly hilarious. Because ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we have here. The expertly subtitled piece of modern art immediately begins with a man talking about how he's not a kid anymore, and how maybe he went to the moon somewhere. This non-child, moon-roaming man is the main character's father, Mayu, and he's too busy pretending to be a spaceman that he forgets to stop violently beating his family. Mayu, a teenage girl, proceeds to run away from her abusive relationship with her father and plans to go to her uncle's house instead, her uncle being Kazuki from the previous two movies, as he desperately tries to avoid this big-headed Japanese lady. Her uncle, also being cool enough to use the Opera browser, the sponsor of today's video, and she absolutely must see it. Generally speaking, it isn't exactly common to be chased around Japan by a giant floating head that absolutely must consume you, but it is common to have a subpar browsing experience. But thanks to the Opera browser, that stops today. Not only does it come with its own free built-in VPN and ad blocker to save you from all of those pesky virtual floating Japanese heads, but it also comes with a myriad of helpful quality of life features, including Aria, Opera's integrated browser AI that's connected to the web and designed to give you clear and concise answers at the tap of a finger, including its highlight tooltip feature that allows you to use Aria to explain something to you, explore the web for more information about it, or even translate it. The browser's all-in-one music player that conveniently collates all the popular streaming services into one place, as well as having access to your messaging apps right at the sidebar, including Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger and more, with no external extensions needed to ensure that you never have to leave the page that you're currently on, as it's all sitting right there for you. Opera's Tab Island system is a new way to keep your browser organized, with functionality that allows for collapsible and expandable groups of tabs for a more cohesive experience, amplified due to Opera's sleek, new dynamic interface, where the UI has been reimagined with an intuitive modular design created for a better user experience. So thanks to Opera for sponsoring today's video, and to get started yourself, hit the link at the top of the description or the pinned comment, and easily import over all of your browser's settings for a stress-free experience today. But while trying to actually make it there, she's stopped by what the Deaf Forest wiki rather politely refers to as a terrible looking old person. The terrible looking old person being the creepy older woman from the previous movies who simply can't help but intensely stare down everyone she ever meets, as that's just how the Japanese greet each other. And the presence of the woman seems to have somewhat of an adverse effect on Mayu, not because she's old, but because her being around causes Mayu to have visions of a strange large disembodied head in whiteface. A large disembodied head that she turns to see directly coming towards her, with the screen then cutting to black. With it actually being the first scene out of the three movies so far that show the old woman and Yoshi together to confirm that they are indeed not the same entity, as Yoshi wouldn't be caught dead with something so grotesque as a human body. Kazuki, who we learn is actually a freelance journalist, gets into a car with a man named Naoto, someone who he's discussing his recent interactions with Yoshi with, for Naoto to then respond like a completely normal and sane person with it doesn't matter if it's okay to eat humans, it's a bad reputation lately. I hate when it's a bad reputation. We used to be a free country. It then cuts back to Mayu as she's running away from the terrible looking old person and her funny looking head, when suddenly she's grabbed by her father and taken back to the house for her favourite childhood activity being beaten. And after being beaten for the heinous crime of avoiding being beaten, she sneaks out again because screw you dad to go hang out with her friends. And piecing together what I can with these incredibly accurate subtitles, the friends are CG, Yuki, Rika and Hiroko, and they all head to Tokyo for the evening. And while they're busy travelling, we see Kazuki meeting up with Naoto in a seedy looking apartment that none of them live in to engage in undisclosed secret activities involving head that neither of their wives know about. A big head a big floating Japanese head. Naoto was somehow able to learn that the floating head is actually called Yoshi, with this being the first time in any of the movies that she's ever referred to as that, with Kazuki quickly leaving after being called up by Mayu's mother and being told that she ran away again. With him wanting to be the one to find her so he can have all the beatings to himself, he quickly excuses himself from the meeting to leave as we see the group of friends attempting to get the last bus out of Tokyo and back to their home, when unfortunately they miss it after being overcome with the sheer unstoppable urge to assault the elderly. They accidentally run right into the terrible looking old person, more than likely causing them to look a little bit more terrible as they're now concussed, with the woman proceeding to stand up and immediately staring at the group without saying a word, 
due to her newly inflicted brain damage, with the woman just really liking the way they look or something. After walking down the road for a while, they look back to see her once again engaging in one of her favourite pastimes staring at underage kids. They're then approached by two men, and for absolutely no reason, other than I guess it just sounded like a really fun thing to do, Hiroko proceeds to attack them, while all of her friends run off in the opposite direction. Wondering why Hiroko just randomly decided to assault two random men, the group of friends eventually find themselves in a forest, before approaching a pitch black tunnel, because that sounds like a great idea. And after making the incredibly well thought out decision to randomly wander into the wilderness in the middle of the night, it cuts to Mayu's father as he's out looking for her, when suddenly he comes across the woman. The woman who once again proceeds to blankly stare at him while smiling, as she suffers from crippling social anxiety and literally can't do anything else. Now further into the forest, Siji decides to split up from the rest of the group, after proudly announcing to them that he's going to synthesize it in the bush for me, before walking off to do just that. Whatever that is. Hey, I don't judge. And while synthesizing it all over the place and making a right mess about it, apparently he offends the local tunnel men, as something strange can be seen emerging from it. A white person. Thinking that he can see something in the distance, he snaps a picture with the flash on, and is immediately concerned after realizing someone's rubbed Vaseline all over his lens. After taking another pic for Snapchat, it then reveals the creature to be closer, before turning around to see one face to face, as apparently it really wants a kiss. The friends hear CG scream as apparently he uses too much tongue, and run towards the tunnel to find absolutely no sign of him. They might not be able to see their friend, but Mayu starts to see Yoshi, as she once again starts to experience visions. After following the smell of CG synthesizing, they find a bloodstain to reveal that CG has had his period early. They then head further into the dark tunnel and come face to face with my browser history. A bunch of naked dudes in the dark. After finding their friend being consumed right in front of them, they then turn to see Yoshi having a bite with incredibly rude table manners. After dropping their torch and running away, because who's going to need that in the middle of a pitch black forest, we then see Hiroko, after casually beating two men, somehow sitting in the car with Kazuki, telling him what happened. She tells him that they ended up missing their bus after running into a terrible looking old person, before Kazuki himself has a vision of the terrible looking old person. After Kazuki's done thinking about his favourite grandma, we then see the group of friends come coming to a stop after running away from the creatures that turned their friend into a speed bump, when Yuki suddenly decides to start taking some pictures to capture the beautiful scenery. But suddenly, they're attacked by a rather rude photobombing creature, but like the average Twitch streamer, is immediately stunned after realising it's light outside. They then run away, flashing a pursuing Yoshi and a group of creatures as they go, when suddenly something lights up behind them as it cuts back to Kazuki and Hiroko. Both of them are now in the forest searching for the group, and despite taking a picture that clearly reveals Yoshi right in front of them, the pair continue to push on completely unfazed, until eventually they come across a tunnel where they discover Siji's arm looking awfully lonely. And after returning from the tunnel and back to the car, they make the discovery of an anklet as we see how it was lost, which is basically just a gentrified version of a house arrest tag. Back with the group of friends, it's then revealed what the light was, as we see that both Mayu and Yuki have been kidnapped and restrained by Mayu's abusive father. Because he loves kids so much, he needs two of them. He was there to witness Rika being grabbed and pulled into the darkness by a slightly aggressive Caucasian, yet still his biggest priority is asserting dominance over his teenage daughter. And despite very much just committing a crime, he decides to pull the car over after driving for a while to carry out the incredibly smart idea that involves climbing into the back of the car and taking various selfies with his currently bound victim. And once he's done having the time of his life documenting the crime, he decides to throw the phone on the side of the road, because leaving evidence is fun. Kazuki and Hiroko proceed to talk about the totally normal concept of tunnel money, while repeatedly attempting to call Mayu's phone, before making the rather convenient discovery of finding it nicely placed on the side of the road by an obvious criminal mastermind. And after looking through the phone and discovering the pictures that were just taken, in the corner of the frame, he can see that they're currently being pursued by a large large floating head obsessed with consuming humans despite having no stomach. Greedy girl. Mayu then wakes up in a house with an unconscious Yuki behind her, with her father revealing that he's incredibly unhappy with the fact that she ran off to Tokyo, kind of glossing over the fact that he literally just watched a teenage girl be consumed by someone with a vitamin D deficiency. And after realising that he's ran out of alcohol, he kicks Yuki awake because how dare I drink all of my own alcohol, before leaving the pair tied up to go get some more. But once again, being the criminal mastermind that he is, with his love-hate relationship with his cell phone, he proceeds to leave his behind 
end, giving Mayo and Yuki the opportunity to free themselves, just as Kazuki calls it. She tells him where they are, which is somewhere I guess, before Kazuki calls someone else and tells them to please strengthen the Jade Ball. With the Jade Ball well and truly strengthened by now, Mayu's father returns just as the pair are about to leave, when suddenly Mayu starts to experience her visions again. After being taken back into the house by the man, suddenly one of the creatures appear behind him, as apparently they're not just restricted to the forest and its surrounding areas. And once it attacks the man, the two friends take the opportunity to flee by shining a torch in the face of another. And after making it back down the street, her father emerges from the house begging to be helped, when suddenly Yoshi appears to do just that in the form of helping him become her ex-dad. Now with extra daddy issues, Mayu falls to the floor before Yuki stuns Yoshi by pointing a light towards her, causing her to simply fade out of existence. After running away from repeated attacks from Yoshi, she's just about to get them, when suddenly Kazuki arrives, shining his headlight at her. And instead of running back to the perfectly safe, well-lit vehicle that is currently right in front of them, they proceed to do exactly not that, and instead run up a flight of stairs. Because if there's anything that this floating head with no legs hates, it's definitely stairs. Yoshi is slowed down by the flash from Kazuki's camera, but like a person wrong on the internet, she keeps attacking. Naoto then suddenly appears, as apparently he's just witnessed the entire thing, before turning on the bright outdoor lights, because apparently this whole thing was planned, and they knew exactly where they were going to end up this entire time. Apparently. And despite very much currently being in the light, Yoshi proceeds to attack anyway and get Yuki from behind, until she doesn't and drops him to the ground, leaving him looking like he's cosplaying as a slug, before disintegrating into the light, and definitely not just teleporting away, as that's not something we've learnt she can already do. With Yuki being alive but slightly moist, Kazuki turns to see the old woman watching from the sidelines as she always tends to do, but disappears right as Kazuki tries to snap a picture. And the next day, after this horrific ordeal has come to an end, Mayu's reunited with her mother to question her about her suspicious taste in men, and Kazuki attempts to meet with Naoto before being told that he's gone missing. This random woman, who I guess just kind of exists now, proceeds to tell Kazuki that she's also managed to find Yoshi's husband, to which Kazuki responds with, what do you do with a man? I don't know Kazuki, you tell me. I don't know what you do with a man, but what do you do when you've got two more of these movies to cover? Because I do. Before this video comes to an end, I'd just like to give a massive shout out and a big thank you to all of the YouTube members and patrons. The people who every month continue to support the channel. If you're interested in becoming a YouTube member or a patron yourself, not only are you just generally being a big support, but you also get access to a few little perks, like the private Discord server, where you can then get links to all uncensored versions of videos going forward. And starting off with this week's new YouTube signups, a massive thank you to Dylan, Ney, Shahab Hosseini Bey, Kitty City, Thomas Stewart, Tony, Wesley O'Gilvy, Dade Forest, Kurz, Jake Pat, Billy Hyun, Reek One, Raccoonicorn, The Games Kill Count and Iris Fan, Joshua Hamilton, Dalton, Sable Zephyr, Itsuki, Will, Ghost Wolf, Ardo Isakan, Jen Wargray, Kyle Downs, Not Emmett, Clement, Scott Ull, X2 Ruby69, Janny Jakella, Jimmy Hildingson, Caden Henderson, Jack Lane, The Carper. It's now moving over to this week's new Patreon signups. A massive thank you to Alana Souls, Matthew E. Cooper, Matthew Williams, Theo, Taylor Schwartz, Brian Walker, Wes, Dan Bayer, Davis Emerson, Jared Boltel, Chunky Goff from Hell, Mr. Patrick Tide, RSD Ojda, Samuel Chesh, Peyton Brigham, Deidre Locker, Amma Polita, Jurgen, Siren Song, Daniel, Kaylee DeLuca, Mul Peng, Akala Man, Ah, Thick Tiddy, Dean Wright, Spooky Suvi, Julian Wernon, Iman, Hayden, Mr. Pyre, Moon, Jackie LaBelle, That Kid Far Out, and They Call Me LS. So once again, a massive shout out to all of the YouTube members and patrons, and a big thank you to everyone else for watching. 